All right, folks, back on the boss man, your friend of the show, Coach John Smith. Cal Poly must have the Big West Conference out there in California doing a big coach. What's up, man? Uh, how's Korea? First of all, how's Korea, man? Oh, man, man, Korea was nice. Uh, you know, was, they, they got my daughter set up very well out there. That was my first time being in that country. And, and man, it's it's well thought out. It's clean. It's it's It was beautiful. I hear that. Now, can you believe it's already heading to your fourth year? Can you believe it? It's been this many years already. Man, it was like a blur. You know, those those uh, COVID years went by fast but long. You know, you take away those two COVID years. I feel like this is like year two for me. But year four, it is what it is. We're 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 turning the corner and still trying to build this program. But we like where we're at. Now, coach, how how is this make you feel? Your administration stood by you because. So a lot of guys don't go to Tennessee there and rebuild through. They're letting you see it through. So what's it about your administration and leadership to say, hey, if we see you making progress, turn the corner, we're going to still support you as you get this program to where we want it to be in the Big West? That's the beauty of, of coaching at Cal Poly. The administration understands um, the dynamics of the job. Um, all the coaches have had longevity here. Um, they give coaches an opportunity to try and build a program the right way. Um, they've already – added two years to my contract that because the, of the COVID years, they understood it was a tough time and, and trying to how, how I wanted to build the program. So they gave me those two years back, but that's the beauty of working for administration like that. You could just focus on, on doing the job that you're, you came to do, you know, coaching in itself is hard. You know, you're, you're constantly trying to uh, help, help young kids mature, uh, at a time where they really don't know what adversity is and they think they do. And then on top of that, trying to win games, you know, so um, it takes time to, to, to do all that. And I'm thankful that I have administration that understands that. No doubt. And, it, and I feel like you shows your players that they, and recruits that, Hey, they, I'm just, just leave you. Cause you know how it is. Recruiting game, game is dirty. You know that how they try to look at your contracts and say different things, but the fact that you're yeah. able to get that into was, was very, I give you two years back was great. And, you know, how are you seeing recruiting change for you now since um, pe people are seeing that you all are growing and getting better? So so are more guys that are taking your calls? Then we'll, then we'll come out reaching the out for you now. How has recruiting been for you this day? People know that you'll be there now. Well, it's, yeah, two things. Yeah, they they understand that I, I have four years left on my contract, so they, they realize that I'll be here through the time that they're here because we really recruit um, from the high school level. But we, we do take some transfers, but also – they're seeing the type of student athletes that we're that we're getting that fit the way that we're trying to play, you know. Um, and if guys fit that mode and they see the style that we play and 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 how guys have had success within that style and it fits them, and then they they get a feel for my staff and myself and and if it's a fit and that's what I always try and tell people in recruiting, you know, having two kids go through it myself, you know, you got to make sure that you're you you know who you want to play for and that person can help you. Um, build and, and grow in this game and you know that's what we try and do and try and develop relationships in, through this recruiting process and, and so far we've been doing a pretty good job so I like where we're at yeah and folks I saw coach in Atlanta man he was out here grinding in Atlanta up in Lake <laughs> Forge, trying, to, trying to find some hey he was on the east coast trying to find players uh -huh. so you know this man's grinding he in yeah. Lake trying to find young men there's some college, some college teams out there but man I said so yeah you are here folks this man's grinding through I I have seen you with my own two eyes He's out here grinding. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the only way to get it done, man. You know? Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you know, talk to me about this. Uh, how's skill development been for you guys this year about any COVID? Because, you know, you know, here in Georgia, it was only closed for like three weeks. It was back open. <laughs> California <laughs> had a little stricter rules out there. So this first summer, yeah, a couple of years about COVID restrictions, testing. How was it to get you guys back on campus and actually have a summer without having to worry about COVID every day? Oh, it, it's, it's it's been exciting for the players and ourselves because the way we handle COVID, like we can only have two to a basket. They couldn't share a basketball. They had to have a mask on. You know, it was crazy for two years. That's how we practice and how, how we tried to prepare them. So now that we have you know, full autonomy to, to do what we want. Um, being on the floor with the guys has been great. Uh, doing a lot of film session breakdowns with the guys have been great. So they're, they're, they're growing fast. They're, they're seeing things quicker. Um, that's why we're excited about this, this upcoming year, because these young guys that didn't get a true understanding of what the college game, um, how to prepare for the college game was like, um, 
now they they're getting a full year uh, of of skill development, film development, um, just breakdown it, and and they're they're anxious to get going, and and you can see their growth every single day. It's been exciting. That's be good for you because you no, know, sometimes when you're freshman guys is going, you you telling the guys A B to C, and yeah. they can say, hey, I'm seeing some different coach. I can do I'm gonna do do D and E now. So yeah. seeing that development has to make you feel so good, like you just said, because that's when you know a guy's straight from the corner when they can actually look at look at a read, not knowing that A to B ain't gonna work, and kind of go down to D D D D and say, okay, we got something here. That's making us a play here. So knowing that, know how your games are in the Big West are thin margins too. Yes, it comes comes in handy. Mm -hmm. No doubt, no doubt, and you see it in our practice every day. Like we we have eight upperclassmen now eight guys that have been in the program at least two years and so we we have four new guys in the program five new guys and um our upperclassmen are stopping them and teaching them now and that's the beauty of of, of what we just talked about the skill development and finally understanding what they're seeing on the floor now they're trying to help these guys shorten their learning curve uh, which has been great no doubt and you know we hold holding people accountable um, you have upperclassmen now who can. That's that's a great team for me. Like when I was playing, Coach Smith, when when we could correct each other about getting mad, because when exactly. the coaches lead it, coach leadership and effort, it should be you of X no, not having a coach effort accountability and leadership. So when your right. upperclassmen are doing that job for you, holding like them accountable, that's mm -hmm. when you ever have a real good team. You know, that's some brewing that's going to be successful when we can correct each other about the issue. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, and that's that's where we're where we're building towards right now. No doubt, and, and Coach Mets, yes, man, this summer with, with having returners, so you can pretty much do some development because you don't have to really put in schematics during those eight weeks you have because you know that's that week, those weeks are very crucial for guys to get better, and so I'm pretty much now probably you're probably doing more schematics, more team stuff now as we close to November seventh now. But, it's like, but talk about that importance from April to now, being able to let those guys really get better because, right, that's what you really want. Because these guys, these yeah. guys want to play, play professionally, whether it be in the NBA, G League, or overseas. They want to get better as they can. They get a good, good, make money at the game that they love. Yeah, no doubt. So with, with our returners, you know, what we did at the end of the year, we we really broke down, okay, what are, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? What do you need to get better in? And some of them, you know, they have to do a better job of, of of not turning the ball over and and what does that look like uh make a decision in tight spaces okay so let's 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 turn our our skill development into something that's surrounded about around that didn't even have to focus on okay how do you learn how to uh run this play how do you how do you run shell how do we rotate out of you know defense we didn't have to do any of that we just worked on trying to get these guys better and then when we brought the new new guys in we were, we were able to now work on our system, you know, so those guys got a, a lot of a lot of development in before we even started putting in X's and O's, like you said. So it's it's been great. And hopefully we can see it um, come to fruition in these next couple of weeks when we play in our first closed door scrimmage, you know, see if those guys have have made the corrections of, of making their weaknesses, their strength. No doubt. I keep putting listeners here about your conference. I, I know when we, I watch it because I'm a junkie. But yeah. it's when you all play, it's like midnight, midnight out here when you all play. But yeah. your games from top to bottom of the league, it's not like people are bad. It's, right. it's, it's, it's possessions here. It's really possessions that determines who's number one to number eight and on down. And talk to our listeners here who really don't get to watch because they're not up like I am watching. Right, right. No doubt. Like with the Big West, there's been a different representation um, in the NCAA tournament from the Big West, probably every every year, you know, there's there's not something there's not a stranglehold on our conference, kind of like Gonzaga has on their conference, right? And then you look at my good friend Diedrich Taylor, uh, you know, uh, he 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 and I have some strong battles, you know, and there was about two or three possessions to where we probably could have, you know, pulled the one game that we played out against them. But that's and we were the last place team, second to last place team, and he was the first place team in the end of winning the conference. But that's the the parity that we have in our conference. You know, it's it's from top to bottom. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night. You know, um, Irvine, who who won it the year before, and and really had, like the first time they played us, they beat us by I want to say eighteen, and then they came to our place and we beat them by twelve. You know, it's it's just 
you know, there's a lot of parity and, and everybody knows each other. And, and, you know, it's, it's some good basketball. It's very competitive. No doubt. You know, like I said, I love watching it on ESPN3. You know, I love doing it because I have four laptops so I'm watching all, all you all who I support. So I got my laptop so I'm watching you all <laughs> trying to see who's doing what like say on top of things, man, because that's kind of junkie and Savannah I'm about to get a basketball, man. And you all playing two, two, two good games, man. Uh, I know probably you're you bringing some money for school with Stanford and Washington. Talk about those yeah. games with how you guys can test them. So a lot of them guys tell me, Coach, I can play like Stanford and Washington. We'll see. So what you do against yeah. these guys now? Yeah, yeah you know, I, for us, it, we always just focus on ourselves. I, you know, you can you can throw the Golden State Warriors out out there. We we're just going to focus on how can we execute without turning the ball over, and how can we shrink the floor and put pressure on the ball and and finish every possession with a rebound. And that's what it is for us. We don't care who we're playing, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, getting our guys to, to understand that the spacing has to be immaculate against teams that have, you know, the length that Stanford and Washington has, um, you know, and then it prepares us for conference, you know, when we play against the Santa Barbara's, the Irvine's and, and, and the Fullerton's, how quick and athletic they are. So it's just a, it's just a good test for us early to see where we're at and then make the correction corrections and be ready to come, come conference time. No doubt. And let me ask you this coach for your, for your young men, you know, Keeping them like you know, not get too hyper worried about yourself. I know for get kids that at age kind of hard sometimes. So what do you do to kind of get their mindset mentally ready, prepare, prepare? I know when I used to play. You know, I was focused on my opponent. I was just you know, my I told you this for my dad's my dad's a coach, so mm -hmm. I get this from my father. You know, <laughs> I'm locked in. But how do you yeah. get like kids in the 18, 24 year old range to really focus on today's playing, being better today? Let's get better today. Let's focus on this opponent, not look ahead like media would, but stay focused on today. Yeah. So, you know, ever since I was a player, um, one of the guys that I admired, obviously a lot of us did was the GOAT, uh, Michael Jordan. And, you know, I studied him and studied his game and, and realized that he was into mental imagery and sports psychology. Right. So I ended up majoring in psychology and minoring in, in sports psychology. And then when I became a head coach, I've always employed a sports psychologist for our team. And when I was a junior college head coach, and then when Deidre hired me as his associate head coach, you know, we were able to bring a sports psychologist on there. And then when I got here, we have a sports psychologist. So that's one of the ways that we try and get our guys to understand to really focus on, you know, staying in the moment and being present in the moment, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Those are, are, are the, the things that we always talk about, you know, and we don't get too far ahead. You know, so getting those guys to understand that will help them be prepared. No me ask you, Coach, uh, you probably watched you when you played. How has the game changed since you played in your opinion? Going well, from playing to now coaching, how has the game changed in your mind since you was playing to now? Oh, it's it's changed a, a, a tremendous amount. You know, everything now is, is positionless basketball, a lot of, um, you know, false motion in the ball screen, you know, um, when I played, when I was a walk-on at UNLV, if you saw our practices, and we were probably, and you know UNLV back in those days was probably one of the best in the country, one of the best programs ever. And our practices were just dog fights. And but it was very simplistic. We ran motion and that was it. We ran motion and and we defended and rebounded. And we ran, we ran, you know, fast break and you know, and and shared the ball. But now it's it's, you know, I can imagine seeing. Stacey Ogman in a ball screen, you know, um, you know, stuff like that. And it, it's, it's, it's just changed um, and getting guys to understand how the game's evolving and trying to stay two steps ahead is, is, is what we're after with players through film and, and, you know, through, through, you know, just helping them schematically understand what, where we're going and where the game's going to help them out as well. You know, what was funny about us at Lake Point when you all up there, man, a lot of coaches asked me about, what, what the Hawks do. And I'm like, we it's about matchups. Mm -hmm. We just trying to get Trey Young on the weakest defender. Exactly. If, everything we do is get him on the weakest defender. That's yeah. pretty much what it would, all the dummy action you see. So we get Trey Young on the weakest defender of their team. Right. Isolate that him on him and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's the same for those teams against us. Miami did it to us. They mm -hmm. want to get Trey Young on, on their best player, Butler, 
and they're going to no dominate. Doubt. So, in the NBA, it's about matchups. So, and I, right. and I know some of your colleagues asking me about can we do it in college. I say it depends on if you got guys who can handle the ball and do that. You know, right. but in college, right. you can zone up. You really can zone up for real. In the game, yeah. kind of, I, 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 I call it a foe zone. But, yeah. You know, you can, you can, but you really can't. You right. Know? Right, and that's the biggest difference. Like uh, our guys, like, oh, did you see what? Did you see what the Warriors ran? Did you see how they did this? Well, look here, and at the college level, we can zone up and be all the way on ball side with five guys as long as we want, right? Whereas you guys at at the pro level, like you're saying, all right, we're gonna run fifty one on uh, five. Come set the ball screen on one, right, and get that switch, and everybody spaced out, and now he's gone. Can't do that at the college level. We're just gonna load up to the ball, you know. So the game is different, different on you know from the college to the pro level. But there's some, there's still some things at the pro level that that we need to pull from and see and be ready for. And and that's what we're trying to get our guys to understand. No doubt. And then I love uh, kids ask me it. Some of the players ask me it who played, and I'm like, you're just not there. You get to do what you do. I try, like you said, coach. Try to tell them. You can zone up for real in college. You can't do that in the NBA. That's the biggest difference. Yeah, it, you you can run. You got the, the best set in the world. The best. Mm -hmm. I, I was gonna zone up. I was gonna load up against you. What you gonna do mm -hmm. now? We got. I have a wall. Shoot mm -hmm. over me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like the NBA, you can't do that. You so like mm -hmm. so. Try to tell some some players here in Georgia. You know, play for us all. Do the stage. Try to tell them, but look, just stick to what Jones and Will Amir telling you to do. We, yeah. You can't do what you see what the Hawks do. Don't don't even yeah. try to do it. You know, right, right. And and you know we got maybe three guys, if that that can that can catch and shoot a wide open three, and and hit it nine out of ten times. Right in the NBA, you probably got ten or eleven guys that can do that, or, or maybe all twelve guys. You know, so it, it's it's a it's a huge difference with the spacing because of the way the ball is being shot at that level as opposed to our level. I'll tell you, of our 14 man roster, coach, don't two of them shoot threes. They want those Clint Capella. Right. All the rest of them shooting threes doing skill development work, private right. practice. Right. <laughs> He's the only one that don't shoot threes. Clint, it's mm -hmm. Clint Capella. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's like, <laughs> so like, you, you see what time it is, but it is, it's lovely. Now, yeah. for you, coach, uh, we have a new space now with the NIL and the portal. And I know yeah. you've got mostly bringing in high school kids, but Mm -hmm. How does it affect you all in the Big West with the NIL and the portal the way it's being now? It's affecting everybody. Uh, you know, for me, you know, I, I brought in a lot of freshmen when I started this program, but this past year I only brought in one freshman and the rest were, were transfers. And some of the conversations in, in, down the stretch was, Coach, what do you guys do for NIL? And I said, well, you know, NIL is a business, right? And it's a business decision for the people that are giving you the money for your name, image, and likeness. They're not going to give you the money if you're not winning. And, you know, um, so let's focus on winning first. And I guarantee you there's going to be a ton of NIL opportunities for you. And already, you know, two or three of our guys have NIL opportunities because they see what we're building and where we're going. And I think, you know, I think eight to nine guys eventually at the end of it could have something. No doubt. Well, Coach Smith, man, it's a pleasure to catch up with you again, as always. Look forward to seeing you late point again this year uh, when you come out to recruit some guys from Georgia, hopefully get some more guys called there play for you. I'm going to bang the drum for you. I know you're a good guy. <laughs> now, I'll do, now I'll spray to you. Go play with Coach Smith. He'll take care of you out there. Carol, I'll be real. So, you know, I got you back, man. I appreciate it, JR. You're the best, man. Appreciate you. All right, Coach. See you soon, buddy. All right, now. Peace. Peace.